Hello everyone, I'll be sharing today with you 10 tips and tricks which I use when I treat extraction cases. Tip number one, I always prefer to do in-mass retraction rather than to retract the canine first and then the incisors. First, because it takes less time and second, because the appearance of the patient will be much better than when you retract the canine, leaving the incisors alone. But some of you may ask, then what about anchorage? If I need more anchorage, then I'll just put mini implants or TADs and use them for extra anchorage. But in most cases, I find that just bonding the sevens is enough. Tip number two, delay extractions. If you don't need the space of the extraction to align the anterior teeth during the leveling stage, I mean, if you have well aligned teeth to start with, then there's no reason to extract premolars and leave the patient embarrassed with their spaces all the time of dur uh, during the leveling until you're ready to retract. What I usually do is I would leave the premolars until I'm into 1925 night time and just before I change into the working wires by a week or so, I would extract the premolars. This will be better aesthetics. Also, I get less bone loss in the premolar region, which makes the, the movement of the canine in this space so much more difficult, especially if the canine root already was bulging to start with. Another thing is that during leveling, many times you get anchorage loss in forward movement of the molars and premolars. This is going to be less when you leave the uh, premolar in the extraction space. Another thing is that we can loosen the premolars for easier extraction by putting brackets on them. And last but not least is the regional acceleration phenomena, which means that when you extract the teeth just before you're ready to retract, then the trauma created by extraction is going to increase the bone cells, which are going to increase the speed of tooth movement. Tip number three, extract the lower second premolars and not the lower first premolars. Unless that you need a lot of space in the lower arch, I would really hesitate to extract lower fourth. Lower force gives more space than the upper force because the root area of the lower anterior teeth is smaller than the root area of the upper anterior teeth. So it's easier to retract the lower anterior teeth than the upper anterior teeth. So if you need five millimeters per quadrant in the lower arch, I'd extract a four. If you need lower, less than five millimeters, then I'd extract a five. If you need in bimaxillary proclination cases to retract the upper and lower the same amount, then I'd extract an upper four and a lower five. According to my clinical experience, it works fine. Tip number four, bond the upper four more gingivally. As you bond the upper four gingivally, it's going to extrude, which is going to make its extraction so much easier. Especially, you know, the upper four has uh, two roots and sometimes very fine tipped roots, which are sometimes prone to uh, fracture during extraction. But as you extrude it, then you may have some cuspal interferences of occlusion. So what I would do is just grind this cusp so that it doesn't become so traumatic. Tip number five, don't bond the lower premolar. The lower premolar has a rounded root and just a single root. It's very easy to extract by just rotational movements. So there's no need to bond it, to extrude it or do anything of the sort. When the time comes, just extract it. The other five tips are related to bonding. Since you're going to retract the interior teeth always bond the sevens. They're going to increase the anchorage of the interior during retraction of the interior teeth. There is, however, a problem if you have an open bite case. 
because as you bond the sevens, they're going to cause extrusion of the sevens, and this is going to open the bite interiorly. So if it's an open bite case or very minimal overbite case, I wouldn't bond the sevens. I'd use tads for anchorage. If it's a deep bite or normal overbite case, I'd always bond the sevens. Using self-ligating brackets in the upper second premolar teeth. And why would that be the case? As we extract the four, we want to retract the anterior segment back. We want this wire to slide through the five, six, and seven. So that the wire slides through the five, six, and seven, it needs very little friction. If you put a regular bracket here, then the ligature wire on it or the ligature elastic is going to cause some friction. So I prefer to use a passive self-ligating bracket so that it doesn't cause so much friction. Invert the bracket on the upper canine. This is especially true if there is bulging of the root to start with, which I notice especially in adults. Because in the MBT system, you have a minus seven torque, which means negative torque. The root is being pushed labially towards the cortical bone. But when your extraction, when you have extraction case, you want to retract the tooth and you want to push the root towards the cancellous bone. So always invert it to give it a plus seven torque. Now tip number nine, use high torque upper incisor brackets. And as we're going to retract the upper incisors backwards, then we're going to get lingual tipping of the upper incisors, which is of course not wanted. We want them to stay relatively upright or slightly proclined. We don't want them to become lingually tipped. And this means we should use high torque brackets, which we will find in the MBT system with plus 10 for the lateral incisor and plus 17 for the uh, central incisor. So I wouldn't really favor to use Roth brackets, but MBT ones are fine. We have a bonus uh, tip, which is if you have a wire in which uh, <clears throat> it is uh, 1925 like this one, 1925 night tie, and the teeth are regularly aligned, then I would always use figure eight ligation like in these cases. And this is why so that it prevents the wire from migrating to the right or left and coming out poking at the end. Unless there is some crowding somewhere where unraveling the crowding means that the, the wire wants to come out and uh, there will be excess wire then only the posterior ones, I'm going to put some loose ligation on them. Tip number 10, invert lower incisors. Now the lower incisor torque for the MBT system is minus six. This is very useful if you have crowded lower incisors, because as you procline them, the minus six torque is going to control the proclination and just lessen the amount of proclination. But if they're not crowded, and they're well aligned, and you're going to retract them because it's an extraction case, then as you retract them, you're going to push the crowns lingually. The minus six is already going to push that lingually as well. So what I do is I invert the lower incisors to give a plus six torque and this is going to counteract the lingual tipping movement of these brackets, the teeth. I hope you found this lecture very useful and found some useful tips in it. If you did then, and you have some questions, please write them in the comments section below and I'll try to answer them. If you have any ideas for future videos, write that down also in the comments section. Otherwise, please subscribe, like, and share. And you can see these two videos on the right side. They're related topics, and you can go through them if you like. Thank you.